NASA's first asteroid samples fetched from deep space parachuted into the Utah desert to cap a seven-year journey. In a flyby off Earth, the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft released the sample capsule from 63,000 miles. The small capsule landed four hours later on a remote expanse of military land. Officials later said that the orange striped parachute opened four times higher than anticipated, around 20,000 feet, uh, basing it on the deceleration rate. The capsule was intact and not breached, keeping its 4.5 billion year old samples free of contamination. Within two hours of touchdown, the capsule was inside a temporary clean room at the Defense Department's Utah test and training range. Scientists estimate the capsule holds at least a cup of rubble from the carbon-rich asteroid known as Bennu. It's just been amazing. And I'll also just say what you saw executed today, that precision, everything going just almost perfectly to plan, that happens because of an incredible team. Um, hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, we heard passing through 100,000 feet, passing through 60,000 feet, and I was getting a little worried, for sure. I knew things were supposed to be happening on a nominal timeline that I wasn't getting call outs, but again, we could have just had radio dropouts there. And then we heard main shoot detected, and I literally broke into tears. I mean, and I'm probably going to do it right now just thinking about it because that was the moment I knew we made it home. And, you know, I'm weary at this point. I've been thinking about this and focusing on it and all of my energy and all of my will has gone into making this thing a success but it was like seeing an old friend that you hadn't seen for a long time and um, it was great to see it it was just great to see it i did want to give it a hug uh, but you know I, I i knew it'd be all city and, and we were trying to collect environmental samples so that really wouldn't have gone over well but yeah it was amazing I was there when it was encapsulated in the fairing. I was there when it was assembled and when it was installed on the spacecraft. I was there when it was nothing but a PowerPoint on a slide in a, in a proposal that we were submitting to NASA with this dream that we were going to bring back samples from Bennu. So it was amazing and emotional. I've been emotional all day, and that was one of the key moments for me was seeing that. So asteroids are the leftover remnants from solar system formation. So they're a pristine example of planetary building blocks and studying them helps us to understand how the Earth and all of the planets in our solar system were formed. So OSIRIS-REx launched in 2016. It took about two years to catch up to Bennu and to get into orbit. And then we spent about two years mapping the surface down to the finest detail, the smallest pebbles, uh, looking at composition and basically trying to find that safe place where we'd be able to grab a sample. And then we spent some time very carefully rehearsing getting that sample, where we first would match the asteroid's rotation and then very slowly descend to the surface. Uh, when we collected the sample, we very, very quickly touched the surface, collect the sample, and back away. Uh, after we had that, we uh, about we took the sample in October 2020. Uh, we left in uh, a couple months later, and it took all the rest of that time to come back to the Earth for what we'll see on Sunday. So our laboratories here on Earth are far more sophisticated than anything we could fly in our spacecraft. And so we'll be taking those samples and looking at what they're made of, looking at the different sizes of particles, but we'll be looking for uh, carbon-bearing minerals. We'll be looking for organics, amino acids, the building blocks of life as well as evidence that there was hydration in the past on Bennu's surface, because all of these things are the sort of materials that were delivered to Earth that helped life flourish here. 